All right, guys, next example, what do we have? We've got a delta source here, and we've got a Y resistive load. So let's take a look at the values that are given. Looks like I've given you guys a voltage right here, and I've given you a resistance on the phase of 20 ohms. Again, each of these guys are balanced. So this is going to be 20 ohms, and this guy is going to be 20 ohms, and obviously this guy is 20 ohms as well. Okay, this voltage that's been given, that looks like it's on the inside of that circuit there. So that voltage is impressed right here and right here. So that value that's given is going to be our phase value. Before we get any uh, further, we should probably put down our equations for del both the delta and the y that we can reference. So for the delta, we know that our V line is going to be equal to our V phase. And we know that our I line is going to be greater than our I phase by a factor of root 3. Over here for the Y connections, we know that um, our V line is equal to V phase times root 3. And over here with the Y, we know that the phase current and the line current are identical. So looking at this, our V line is equal to our V phase. And we can clearly see that this voltage right here is the same as this voltage right here. So that means that the voltage on the outside of the circuit is the same as what's on the inside of the circuit. So this voltage right here on the outside is going to be 2 8 volts on the line. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll drop those guys in. For the source, we know that our line voltage is 208 volts. And we know that our phase voltage is 208 volts on the phase. Okay, that voltage on the line travels over here and gets impressed across our resistive load, but we can see that our resistive load is a Y, and that voltage is across two resistors. So there's no way that this voltage across this resistor or this voltage across this resistor can be 2 8, right? Our line voltage is 2 8 going into that three phase load, but our phase voltage is going to be 208 volts divided by root 3, and that gives us 120 volts. Okay, so this voltage across our resistor is 120 volts. Now we can find our currents. So uh, we need to find our phase current here. So this was, <clears throat> let's see, this was step one here in order to find our line voltage. We brought that across. Then we found our phase voltage. Next step here is to find our phase current. Uh, and to do so, we have 120 volts that has been oppressed across a 20 ohm resistor. So if we take the 120 divided by our 20 ohms, that gives us 6 amps. Beautiful. Okay, so we have 6 amps, and we know that that current is on the phase, right? So our phase current is 6 amps, but we can clearly see that there's one path for that current to flow from the line onto the phase here. So that 6 amps is also going to be on the line. Okay, so for this guy, and we're referencing this equation here, I line is equal to I phase. So our I line here is equal to our I phase, which is equal to 6 amps. Beautiful. Now that 6 amps is coming from over here, right? That's that same conductor. So if there's 6 amps here, there's 6 amps here. So this value right here is 6 amps on the line for our delta secondary there. So we'll drop that guy in here. Okay, this guy here was given, right, what are we on? This is step four, right, in order to determine our, uh, our line current. And then step five, we just brought that across over to here. Okay, step six is we've got to find our phase current. Now, we can see that there are currents coming in each of these directions and then going out. And each of these currents we know are not going to happen at the same time. They'll be 120 degrees out of phase. So in order to find our phase current here, we're going to have to take our I line divided by root 3. So in that case, we have 6 divided by root 3. And let's see what that gives us. It gives us 
Excellent. And that would be our phase current. So we can drop that in here. 3.464 amps on the phase. So there's 3.46 amps being developed on this winding of the transformer, 3.464 amps being developed here, and 3.464 amps de being developed here. These two values of current at 3.464 are going to be 120 degrees at a phase, and the vector sum of those guys will be 6 amps. That 6 amps will travel along here, come through this 20 ohm resistor, and develop 120 volts across there. Beautiful. Okay, last thing we need to do is find our power values. And we've been using, all the way through, we've been using um, two different equations. So we've been doing uh, V-line times I-line times root 3. So in this case, our V-line is 208 volts. Our I-line is 6 amps. And we're going to multiply that by root 3. <clears throat> so what do we got? 2, 8 times 6 amps times the square root of 3. That gives us 2161.6. And we're going to use that units of watts there because they're all resistors. And then over here for our final thing for our VA here, we can do V phase times I phase. But we're, when we're doing single phase values, we're going to multiply that by 3. So our phase voltage is 208 volts on the phase. Our phase current is what? 3.464. I'm going to multiply, multiply that by 3. Okay, so we've got 208 volts. We're going to multiply that by 3.464. Then we're going to multiply that by the square root of 3. That gives us 1247. What did I do? Because that 1247 is not the same as that 2161. So I must have gone off the mark because they should be the same. I'll take a look here. I've, I've multiplied it by the square root of 3, right? So be careful when you're on cruise control, right? We're trying to do the other equation. We're using the phase value, so we have to multiply it by 3. So let's try that again. 208 volts. And we're going to multiply that by 3.464. And then we're going to multiply it by 3 for 3 phases. Okay, 2161.54. That's better. Beautiful. And again, these guys are essentially the same, right? 2161.6 watts and 2161.54 VA. Excellent, guys. All right, thanks for your patience. Uh, we have a couple more. I think one or two left on uh, our delta to y, y to delta, y to y, and delta to delta configurations.